we're going to be palpating flexor digitorum superficialis. Now flexor digitorum superficialis is in our second layer. So we have four muscles of the first layer and now we're going to be going through them to get to the second layer. Flexor digitorum superficialis has multiple origins. So we're going to go through all three of those to start here. The first thing I'm going to be doing is finding her medial epicondyle and therefore the common flexor tendon. Now I'm going to show you the action with my other hand. And what you're going to be doing is basically closing your hand but leaving the distal fingers straight. So I almost call it a one-handed kind of clapping motion like so. Good. So you're going to be repeating that several times throughout this. So right here off that medial epicondyle. What we really want to avoid to help identify this muscle is any wrist action. Because all the other muscles off the medial epicondyle typically have some motion to do with the wrist or the supination pronation, we're going to be just sticking with just finger action for this. Okay, excellent. So we'll repeat that. The second origin is going to be on the ulna. And that's the coronoid process. I'm going to stop the action for just a moment. I'm going to passively flex her elbow up and take my fingertips and sink down towards that ulna. So again, this is in a similar location for pronator teres, but instead of any pronation action, again, we're going to get her to repeat that finger movement. So again, I'm getting a muscle contraction underneath my finger here, which therefore needs to be superficialis. That's the second origin, and the third origin is going to be on the proximal anterior surface of the radius. So one of the things that we're going to be looking for is it has to be distal to the biceps tendon insertion, because that's on that bicepital tuberosity. So I can cross fiber her biceps tendon right in here, which is taking us to about there, and the radius is deep to my fingers. So I'm going to go just past that, or on the anterior surface of that proximal radius and she's going to repeat that action with her hand and I can easily see my fingers going up and down. There's actually a gap which has the median nerve going underneath it so I'll mention at this time the median nerve is what innervates flexor digitorum superficialis. For our muscle belly I'm going to squeeze the whole second layer as best I can so I'm going to put some fingers on this side here, close to the ulna, and my thumb on the opposite side, near that radius attachment, and I'm gonna get her to repeat that motion. Now I'm getting pushed out on both sides, which is a good sign that I'm on superficialis, and I'm gonna travel down the forearm repeating this large squeezing motion. Flexor digitorum superficialis is gonna be muscle belly for over half of kind of that forearm before it starts to turn into tendons. And those tendons are going to travel down the rest of the forearm and then enter into the carpal tunnel. So if you've watched previous videos, you might have seen me outline the flexor retinaculum between the scaphoid, trapezium, pisiform, and hook of hamate. But the four tendons of superficialis will go underneath that retinaculum before entering into the hand. At this point, it's going to send out one tendon for each of the four fingers here. So what I'm going to ask my partner to do is hold her finger like so as I resist on that middle phalanx. Its insertion is going to be on that middle phalanx, which is why I'm adding my resistance here. I'm going to follow our tendon out through the palm of the hand, crossing the metacarpal phalangeal joint, and then it's going to insert on both sides of the middle phalanx. So our tendon crosses the metacarpophalangeal, the proximal interphalangeal before splitting into two insertion sites on both the medial and lateral side of this middle phalanx. We're gonna repeat this process for the other fingers as well. So for finger number three, again, following our tendon out before it inserts in two locations. Repeat it for our fourth finger here. And finally, for the pinky. Like so. The actions for flexor digitorum superficialis, so we'll try to show you, is it's flexing at the metacarpal phalangeal and that proximal interphalangeal, but not the distal. 
So as we close the fingers up, we leave those distal ones straight. And it's also going to flex at the wrist and have some weak flexion of the elbow as well. And as I mentioned earlier, it's innervated by the median nerve. 